Hey, Gary Leland here. And Tony Sakala. And we are the Crypto, the Crypto Cousins. Cousins. And this is a special episode of Conversations with Gary and Tony. Or Tony and Gary. Yeah, we're just going to chat. We're going to talk it up. We get very excited about crypto. And so we don't know where the conversation is going to go. You know, what we're going to start doing is every time Tony and I get together over here, we're going to, we're in the Crypto Cousins studio. We're going to sit down before we do anything and record an episode because... What happens is we come in, we get all excited, and we talk for like 20 minutes, and then we try to record something. So today, all we've done is unload the car and started talking. So that's the deal today. So the first of our conversations, crypto conversations. Crypto conversations. I like it. Yeah, a lot of stuff going on right now. First, let's start with our new scheduling. We're changing the schedule for the uh, Tell me. podcast. Well, you know, right now, on Tuesdays, we normally do our show. It comes out Tuesdays, and we were trying to keep them at a half an hour. And we never did that. No, we couldn't do that. <laughs> it's impossible. And now with the interviews, they're lasting like way over an hour. Mm -hmm. So we decided we have so much content that on Tuesdays, we're going to come out with our regular interview, regular shows with no interviews. Mm -hmm. Then on Thursday, we'll come out with an interview show. Okay. So that'll be just the interview. It'll be kind of quick. We'll talk for a few minutes, get right into the interview, and get out of it. So you'll have Tuesday, our regular show, where we'll go over what our thoughts are on crypto, and Thursdays our uh, interview show, and then we're going to have a third show we're going to work in there called the Crypto Quickies, which are going to be three or four minute shows where we go over one little subject real quick. And so, crypto Quickies. Yeah, we got to figure out where we're going to put the Crypto Quickies at. So <laughs> we may put those on Monday. You start the week out on Monday mm -hmm. with a five minute Crypto Quickie, then you have a regular show on Tuesday, then our interview show on Thursday. So we're already at three shows a week. At least. Starting, we're going to start that in two weeks. All right. And not next week, but the week yeah, after. Week after. Okay, so that's the deal on the new layouts for the Crypto Cousins podcast. I'm excited. I'm excited. Yes. What well, are you excited we have, we about? Have, well, we have so much content. We have so many things to talk about. Uh, this morning, I was looking at Verge. You were looking at Verge. I was actually, 10 minutes before you got here, I was looking at Verge. <laughs> I was looking at Verge coin. And uh, Verge has gone crazy, really, in the last couple weeks. I mean, recently it's Just gone. Recently, yeah, yeah, it's gone. It's gone crazy in price. Well, I look at it from the mining viewpoint, and uh, you know, what to mine says. You know, you can mine Verge, and uh, it's got a great algorithm, and uh, any GPU can mine it. So you got an old graphics computer, you got an old gaming computer. Just turn it on and start mining Verge. You, know, you might wake up in the morning with a lot of crypto. So my old uh, computer I used to use for gaming on Second Life. Uh huh. Now I might be able to mine. You can, yeah, you'll make some satoshis on that. Okay, okay, well that's cool. Anytime, <laughs> that's just sitting in the corner over yeah. there. So I'm going to have to turn that over. Right now we've been mining mostly Zcash, mm -hmm. and we've been very happy with Zcash. Very happy. Zcash has done us right. It's done us right. And yeah. uh, we've gotten quite a bit of it, and it's gone up in value while we've been mining it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, and there are there's Zcash Classic. There's Zencash, there's Hush. There are a lot of coins now that are using these GPU-friendly algorithms. So that's number one. Number two is we're building a new site for our mining machines. Cause, Standalone you know, site. You may, may not know what we sell. And you may know we sell uh, mining machines. We have the Ethan Miner as our most popular machine, but they're kind of like plug-and-play machines. We set them all up for you, and uh, for the most part, you just plug them in and turn them on. Uh, they start mining. We start sending some of the cards separately to make it easier, less chance of being damaged and shipping. For the most part, it's a plug-and-play machine. But you had to go to the Crypto Cousins website, hunt for it, mm -hmm. go to the store, yeah. find the mining machines, go to that. So we've made this new site that is almost done. So I'm going to go ahead and announce it. It's you not quite done. It's almost done. Yeah, if you get there and you find out it's not, you can't you buy come anything back to the yet. Cousins. Yeah, come back it'll, to the it'll Cousins. It'll be live on Cousins. Since but but it will be finished in... It, Probably Tuesday or Wednesday. We're pretty close to having it. And that's um, turnkeymining.com. Yeah, thank you. I forgot the uh -huh. name of the site. Turnkeymining.com. And basically all this there is the Ethan. Ethan right now. Well, we've had Ethan, but we had the Mini, which is a smaller version of Ethan. Uh, and we found that it wasn't that popular. People kept asking us for more, more and more. So Ethan comes in, rounds out at about 1,000 Zcash hashes per second or also known as Equihash, and so the Equihash algorithm is really popular for Zcash, Zencash, you can use it for a lot of coins, and people like that. You can just plug and play with the Ethan, you bring, you bring it into your home, there's no wires sticking out or anything like that, it's just all in, in one simple case, 
We even have an Ethan in the kitchen. We have an Ethan in the living room. We have an Ethan in the bedroom. Now, this is at his place. At my place. Yeah, not. I, I don't have him in my... You don't have to put him yeah. in your living room or you your don't kitchen. Have to. That's not a That's version. It's not the kitchen version. There is a kitchen. It looks like a microwave. People won't know. You know. Uh, you, you know. Obviously, you can't load up sixteen miners in one outlet. You know. You, but when you start doing what we're doing, testing miners, building miners, designing miners, we have them all over the all over the condo, and so uh, it works really well. It's super quiet. Uh, people want more. We started designing a machine called Maximus. Maximus. And uh, we you know we ran into trouble because you start getting more cards, more power, and then um, you. You have trouble managing the power. You have to go to two power supplies. You have to, you might want to look at 220 volts, 240 volts, whatever it's called. That's two, 220. You might have to unplug your dryer and hook and up plug your it in. machine. Exactly. So you know we we scaled back a little bit because uh, and we went back to the drawing board on that. But that we're still working on a larger version. Or you can just buy two Ethans. Two people have already bought two Ethans. They just right. said, let's just give, give me two, and uh, so it's been selling really well. And, no, uh, Tony has been building him. He can't keep up. He's up. He to, cannot uh, keep up. He's up till he, I get a message from him. It's three o'clock in the morning. I gotta go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> been working on it yeah, on order for Joe out of San yeah, Diego. Yeah, yeah. Or whatever. Don't text me at seven. I am not going to be awake. Uh, you know, so hopefully we don't stimulate too many sales at the moment because we're right. Yeah, now we really haven't advertised. Uh, we have the, not no advertising. Just a little bit on Facebook uh, talking. Just about mentioning it, not advertising. Yeah, just mentioning it, no yeah, advertising. Yeah. There's, a, there's a real pent up demand for uh, for the machines because everybody's out about everywhere, and no one really has, I think, a machine that not only is plug and play like ours is. Well, maybe someone does, but ours is plug and play, and it looks so good you could show it to someone and go. Hey, there's my mining machine. And they go, what are all those wires sticking out of there and stuff? Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, exactly. You know, uh, it's just something different for the marketplace. I just felt like uh, we wanted. I wanted something that was simple, clean, and you know, the Ethan really. It not only looks good, but if you have a dusty home, like who doesn't have dust in their home? Uh, you can imagine that dust is going to get all over your graphics right. card. So you know, this is an enclosed. Uh, device and uh, there's air coming in with a fan and there's a filter in the front and so you'll see it over time it'll start to get white and, and you, you probably should clean that out you just clean out your filter just but like it, if you have one well, like in our bedroom we have one of those air filters mm -hmm. going and my wife likes the noise right, and, I, right, right. and she has to take that filter out and clean it every mm -hmm. once in a while exactly so it's the same thing with you you'll see it the white starts to show up on the front of, of the device where the air comes in and uh, so it's it's really I want to tell you this. This is another interesting topic. The great GPU blackout. That's I, what I was going to bring up. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> That's what the I was going to The great GPU say. blackout is here. Uh, forget about buying a GPU in the next 6 to 9 to 12 weeks. Forget about it. And the price, not only, not only is it impossible to find them almost, the price on them has shot through the roof since we started our machines. Mm -hmm. We've had to increase the price several times now because our costs on the cards have gone up and the graphic cards have gone up so much. It's not that we're going, oh, we want to charge more money. No, no, we don't want to charge more money. We have money. to go, well, we can't lose money. I mean, I mean, it's been crazy. So we bought a card on Amazon a couple weeks ago. A card roughly, let's just say, $520 before tax. Uh, two days ago, $560. Now, $620. Now, people are reselling the cards, $900 and $1,200 for a card that was $500. And it's new, or is it new? Or? Well, I mean, it might be, it might be new, uh, you know, depending that. on the listing. Amazon has, Amazon okay. is really like a so we can, up we can take our inventory and just sell it back we off. Can sell, we can just sell and the make, cards. Maybe we as much as we are in the machine. We don't, we don't have to build anything. anything. Just, just sell the cards back. <laughs> I mean, I can sleep more. Yeah. <laughs> well, that is pretty exciting. Well, you know why that's happening. Because all these gamers are ruining it for us. Well, yes, exactly. <laughs> Those gamers, stop, stop buying Stop cards. playing games. You know, no, they no, always no. are going, no, you I, miners are ruining it for us. Gamers. Are, we, I say those gamers are ruining it for us. it for us, miners. We are really trying to make an income here, trying to help society, and you're world. greedy. You want exactly. to take out the cards uh, so you can just have fun and play in your exactly. base. Exactly. Come on. Have any, <laughs> use an old card. Come on. <laughs> What do you need a new card for? Yeah, come on, fast enough. Come on, 10, 1080. You need more than 1080? 1440, 2160, 60 frames per second. Come on, slow it down. It's fine. <laughs> but anyway. We're joking, game. We're just joking. <laughs> we're kidding. We're teasing you. But uh, so what's happening is NVIDIA is stopping. Oh. They're not making their cards anymore. Well, hold on just a second. But I just noticed that I don't have the lights on here, and this is much better, I think, with the lights on. All right. 
So we're gonna uh, turn keep the lights recording. on. We're keep recording. All right. And I'm gonna turn the lights okay. on. Okay. We're in we're in the dungeon right now. I forgot all about that. So we keep, got too excited. Keep talking, Tony. Okay. So why why is the great GPU blackout coming? What's happening? All right. I guess some light is that Nvidia is coming out with a new round of cards every couple of years, every year, maybe every 18 months. They come out with a new series. Uh, this series is called the Pascal series, and uh, it featured smaller chip size, smaller die, uh, faster processors. But uh, everything must come to an end in technology, and so they're getting better technology called Volta. Volta details haven't been released uh, exactly what the specs will be, but we all know the car is going to be uh, less power hungry and uh, speedier. And so we don't know what's going to happen, but we do know it's coming. And we pretty much surmise that NVIDIA has stopped making 1080s, 1060s, 1070s, 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 1080s, that the factory is no longer making those cards because you cannot get them. We've been told, hinted at by some representatives in the field, they said, get your cards now, get them today. Today's the last day of the year. Go online, look for your cards, just look for the prices. You're going to see, just invest in a card. You can buy crypto, you can buy a card. Yeah. Buy a card, and then next week you'll sell it for twice as much. Well, we might buy it from you next week. We're going to buy it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. We'll buy it from you. I spent a lot so of money. So if you're in Dallas, Fort Worth area, especially, you might want to buy one, and we want the freight that way. Yeah, exactly. We'll save a little <laughs> on freight. So, yeah, so we went shopping this last week, and uh, we, we got a lot of cards. We've got uh, we've got a box full of cards over here. You know, speaking of the new year, I, I want to uh, talk about crypto for a second. Let's go get off sex subject of mining for a second and talk about crypto. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I was listening to a show, I listen to a lot of a lot of information on podcasts, and one of them came up with a point of uh, view, uh, I listen to a lot of podcasts about crypto, brother. one of them came up with a comment I was listening to, I can't remember what show it was, about the first of the year. And I was wondering what your thoughts were. We're not legal, we're not advisors, legal are uh, illegal. illegal. We're not any kind of advisors, <laughs> we're just talking and letting you listen in. But what do you think of the idea, this, this concept someone talked about on the show was that with the first of the year coming, there are going to be a ton of people who want to sell their Bitcoin for a profit, hmm. but they've been waiting for the first of the year so they can carry the tax implications, not uh, paying this April coming up, uh, but April a year later. Uh, and so that uh, while some people say people are going to get their tax refunds and know they're coming and be buying a lot, Another train of thought is on that, that a lot of people are going to go, now is when I want to sell because I can carry my profits for taxable purposes and pay them in the year April of 2019 versus 2018. And that Bitcoin and cryptos, you'll see a little dip of people selling to take advantage of delaying those taxes where they might have sold today mm -hmm. or they might have sold last week, but they said, wait a second. Why am I going to sell now and pay the taxes in four months, where if I wait a week, I can pay the taxes in 16 months? What do you think of that thought? Well, I think that's an interesting thought, um, you know, because we're always trying to find out what is the cause and effect of the price. And the cause and effect of the price is obviously on two factors, fear and greed. So when people are buying crypto, they're either afraid that they're missing out, fear but, of missing out, FOMO. FOMO, yes. FOMO. Yeah. FUD. FUD yeah, is yeah, another yeah. One. FOMO, yeah. FOMO. And then, uh, what's the other one? Uh, so, your fear of missing out, and that, that it's going up, uh, or regret that you didn't get it. So, what could happen with the taxes? I have absolutely no idea. You know why? I'm not so certain. I think it's, a, I think it's a theoretically possible, but I think Coinbase said they have, whatever, a couple million people, and in the previous year, about 14 people filed to protect their taxes. <laughs> so, well, we're not uh, advising to so do that. that. <laughs> well, I'm just giving data. That's yeah, about yeah. what happened. So, uh, Where'd you get that from? Where'd you see uh, that? It was online. I mean, maybe it was 17. But uh, it, yeah, it's yeah. quite quite a low number relative to the number of people on Coinbase. Well, I would think, and, and don't get me wrong, I'm not a rocket science on this stuff, but I would think that the IRS is like, saw that too. I think they were actually reported it, in fact. So... Uh, so anyway. so yeah, that could be uh, there could be a lot of people in trouble from that. Well, that's what I also saw where Coinbase had to turn over the names of everybody who had made a profit of maybe over twenty thousand dollars or something. Mm -hmm. Perhaps you know, cashed out. You know uh, what I I feel like. Um, so you don't think you don't think that's gonna uh, like the first two weeks of 
2018 that we're going to see a sell-off by people who've been wanting to sell off for the last month, but they had large amounts, which would affect the price more of people with small amounts, and they were waiting to carry that tax liability over for another 12 months. See, that's the way I'm looking mm -hmm. at it. The 12-month deals, I don't think there's a lot of people with little amounts that are going, oh, i got to carry that over 12 months. But people who have a lot of Bitcoin to cash in that maybe bought it in January for $1,000 are going, wow, I can't sell it at 13000 in November. i got to carry it another month and a half. Perhaps, and those would affect the price. They could, perhaps. But, you know, we're at a relatively low prices right now. I mean, we've come off the high, approaching 20, and uh, now we're at, uh, what are we at? You know, it's like 13,100. 13,100. Something like that. Yeah, so I don't know how much further we have to go. I mean, because, you, you know, psychologically, people have these price breaks. You know, you'll see a sell wall, you know, at 20. You'll see something at 10. You'll see something at 10.5. So, you know, psychologically, there's going to be a point at which people are going to say, you know what, that's my point, I want to buy again. Right. So, I have no idea. Well, that was a good conversation there we brought. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm looking at it, because I, I could see that happening, to be honest with you. I, I, uh, could, I could just, in my mind, see uh, that happening, that uh, all of a sudden you have a sharp drop-off again, and it's because of that, not because of people, and uh, just people profit-taking, mm -hmm. which would go back up, but mm -hmm. it's profit-taking by people with large amounts. I think it's certainly possible. Mm -hmm. I think it is certainly possible. So there you go. That's uh, that's the uh, first of the year unknown predictions from us because we never know what we're doing. Because for the most part, we hodl. I do have to say though, I did buy Ripple a week ago mm -hmm. for ninety seven cents, mm -hmm. and it's like at two dollars now. So I'm kind of excited about the uh, mm -hmm. Ripple deal. I think I'm probably going to sell if it hits three dollars, mm -hmm. um, just because I don't believe in Ripple long term. Um, but I think that uh, there was some money to be made. So but there's some money to be made. That's it. that's you know, and that's what this is about for a lot of people. You know, let's see what we can buy low and sell high. Right. Uh, and I think that's a great strategy. Uh, I don't know about Ripple at all uh, long term. Yeah. Uh, it looks like it has a lot of uh, you know central banks are behind it. Uh, it is an interesting coin. How many did they make? I mean, uh, billions, billions. Billions. Yeah, so yeah so billions. It's. I was looking at someone maybe. Three hundred twenty-five billion. I mean, I don't know, but it is in the billions. Uh, yeah. So I mean, that's so, no, it's, in, it's not in the low billions uh, either. So it's like it's yeah, it's high billions. So I mean, that that affects the the this market cap, almost the second biggest in market cap. Well, if you make that many billions, Gary. Well, but I saw the happen. I saw this morning a thought uh, on Ripple that someone had mm -hmm. just that matter who it is, just mm -hmm. a thought that Ripple, since Ripple is for the banks and working for the banks, that the banks were trying to get everybody to buy Ripple with their Bitcoin, and then they own the money, and then they were going to drop the price out of it and buy, buy the Bitcoin. And buy the Bitcoin. Yeah. Quite possible. Yeah, so no, uh, I don't I'm not long, as far as I can throw them. Yeah, I'm not long term, but a lot uh, of people also think that because of its market cap, you know, Ripple moved into the number two slot mm -hmm. ahead of Ethereum. Yeah. And so it's right behind, well, it's not right behind Bitcoin. It's got yeah. a long ways to yeah. catch up with Bitcoin, mm -hmm. but it is second behind. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people think that because of the fact it's second now uh, in market capital, that it'll be the next one to go on Coinbase. Mm -hmm. And the thinking mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. that if it goes on Coinbase, and that may be cause of the surge even now, that if it goes on Coinbase, that the, all the newbies coming in are going to go $13,000 for Bitcoin, $3.00. Two dollars for Ripple. Mm -hmm. well, let me throw some in that because right, right. I can afford to buy a bunch mm -hmm. of them, but I can't afford. And if that happens, that the price would go up to five or ten dollars. Mm -hmm. It's the thinking. It's a good. It's a good short-term play. It's yeah. So th that would make me happy. I would probably be out by the time mm -hmm. it hit ten dollars. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's the thing about crypto and stocks are the same mm -hmm. exact way, Tony. What people always go up to you and they go. You know, I knew I should buy that Facebook stock at $18. If I had to follow through, I'd be rich right now. It's $180. Or the same mm -hmm. thing with crypto. Right. But the thing is, no, they wouldn't because they'd have sold. They would have sold. I bought mm -hmm. Facebook at $17.80, and so I sold at $50. Now it's $200. Mm -hmm. I wasn't, you know, when I started dipping, I'm going, I'm happy with the $50. And right. that's the way crypto is. People, sure. people make some money, and they go, wow, I've doubled, tripled my money. I'm getting out of it, and then a year later, it kept going up, but they were happy with a double or triple. Exactly. But people, most people don't keep their investment that long. They go, I've double or triple my money, I'm getting out of this thing, and it starts tanking. Because there are dips all the way on anything. Well, I think a lot of people didn't really understand the word hodl. I mean, <laughs> yeah. you hodl, the interesting story, it's uh, someone was drunk 
And they were typing in some... Um, I was just going to say that. They were in, oh, <laughs> you tell the story. You tell the story. No, no, yeah. you tell the story. Well, you know, they're drunk, so they're like, I want to hold my Bitcoin. But, you know, he was drunk, so he typed HODL instead of hold. And so it stuck. People were joking around, like, what is that? HODL? I think it was a Reddit. Was it a Reddit thread? Yeah. And uh, so now the term is stuck, so we say HODL. And it basically means hold on to your Bitcoin for as long as possible. Holding on for dear life, I always say. That's another great way of saying it. So, yeah, holding on for dear life. So... Uh, people who got into Bitcoin at 100, when it reached 1,500, when Mt. Gox was being pumped and dumped. Yeah, they sold. They sold. They're 15 out. times their they're, money. Yeah, they're like, okay. Like, complain. And they were very happy when it came back to whatever, three, four, five. Yeah, so when you hear these people say, mm -hmm. if I'd have bought it at 100, I'd be they would have sold. They would have not Most exactly. of them would have sold. They would have sold. They were like, all right, this is it. So uh, hang on to your crypto. There's a great, bright future ahead. Uh, I'm a Bitcoin maximalist, which basically means... Uh, I think Bitcoin is the one. I think everybody else is a clone coin. Uh, everything else is uh, trying to jump on the bandwagon because uh, suddenly they saw the light of what blockchain was. But, you know, what Satoshi Nakamoto came up with was a consensus approach to take, keeping track of the ledger. So you have a global ledger and uh, there's no central authority. And so when the banks want to make their own coin, like Ripple or Ethereum, which is supposedly decentralized, but, I mean, it's really not, uh, then I don't really feel uh, like that is the spirit of cryptocurrency. And I'm not as much of a maximalist as Tony is. I think there could be possibly a flipping someday. Flipping? Yeah. And flipping the flipping is, the flipping is <laughs> when something takes over Bitcoin. Uh -huh. uh, basically, or replaces Bitcoin would be the flipping. Mm -hmm. But basically, to me... I'm a believer in Bitcoin, I'm a believer in crypto, but I don't know 100% if right now Bitcoin is the MySpace or the Facebook. Ah, okay. You know, mm -hmm. uh, it could be the MySpace for all we know. Uh, we don't know the future, but it could be the Facebook and it starts, it could be crypto started out with the Facebook, you know, compared mm -hmm. to, you know, we had Friendster and then we had MySpace and we had Facebook and we may have something else tomorrow take its place. You know, so I, I don't know 100% either way and, and maybe that's because I haven't been in as long as Tony's been in it, you've been in it since it was around a hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. You know, I got in it and it was uh, over three thousand dollars when I got in it. So that's why I'm not a hundred percent sure uh, which way it's going. Sure. Well, I'm not certain, but I choose to believe that it'll be the one. I choose to believe that it will be uh, continue to grow. And in software, when you're the number one guy, uh, people are always attacking you, and so. What happens with Bitcoin is that the more it's attacked, because it's decentralized, uh, the stronger it gets. So they call it the honey badger. The honey badger don't care. If you haven't seen the honey badger video, look it up. Google the honey badger video. It's, it's not safe for work. It's full of all kinds of words, uh, but it's hilarious. And the honey badger don't care. He uh, gets attacked by all kinds of animals, and he comes back stronger. So that's what I feel Bitcoin is. It's going to come back stronger. It's the number one. It's the big one. And it, uh, it has a strong base of developers, uh, developers with a great vision. And uh, it, there's some fascinating technologies that are being built on top of it. The Lightning Network, SegWit. Uh, SegWit has been amazing for Bitcoin. Uh, and because it's been attacked so many times, it looks like, oh, it's struggling. But actually, it's getting stronger. Well, actually, you know, talking about being attacked, this was a term I had not really heard of or thought of in this way was spamming Bitcoin. Oh, yeah. And mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. and I saw it. I, mm -hmm. I see it you happening. See it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I kept telling my wife, "Going, what the deal is with this?" When I'm watching, um, you know, uh, the exchange, I'm watching all the purchases mm -hmm. going through. And spamming Bitcoin for, if, in case you don't know what it is, it would be like if I sent with one order, one Satoshi. Well, this would be an extreme example, I think, to a thousand people. So now you got a thousand things filling up a block mm -hmm. that are all for one Satoshi. Mm -hmm. And the purpose of that, and it's bots doing it, sure. and the purpose of that is to drive down the price of Bitcoin. So that's what my thinking is spamming Bitcoin would be mm -hmm. an example. Is that correct? Well, that's one example. Uh, when Bitcoin was under attack by Bcash, uh, it, there, there was a correlation between what was happening in what's called the mempool. The mempool is where the un confirmed transactions sit. So they sit there and they have Satoshis attached for the transaction fee. So miners can pick them up and say, okay, well, if we confirm this transaction, we'll get this fee. So the low fees uh, transactions don't get picked up. And if millions of them hit the mempool, 
then it gets it looks like it's behind and Bitcoin's struggling and you should have had a bigger block size. You should just you should just be Bcash. Yeah. And so, but the I mean, that's more of an attack. That's not really it's, spamming. It's it's, it's, well, it's a, yes, exactly. It's an attack and it's spamming the system as well. Yeah. I uh, I heard of a new technology that's coming out. Have you uh, heard of Swore? I think it's called. Tell me. Well, I just heard this the day before yesterday, and I'm not even sure I got the name correctly. But right now, if I sent to you, if I sent out a payment uh, to a thousand people, mm -hmm. uh, like I was talking about of Satoshi, it's a thousand transactions mm -hmm. in the blockchain. With the new, with this new technology, I think it was called Smore. I may have the name wrong. It condenses that to one transaction. Uh -huh. So now the blockchain would instead of having the blocks having a thousand transactions for that one thing, mm -hmm. now that's one transaction. So it cuts down the size of big orders like that and takes care mm -hmm. of one of the problems that uh, I just heard about this day for yesterday. So, well, they're testing it now. Look, well, there's there's a main net where everything happens, and there's a test net. And on the test net, people with every coin, there's test net where people develop the new technologies and work on them uh, with uh, play money, with not real money. Uh, and in the test net, things are new technologies like this s'more. Uh, and it's not s'more as they eat, even if I did nah, the name right. I could have the name wrong. It could be. But I think it was s'more or something like that. Something like that. Maybe the guy likes s'mores. Could be. <laughs> it sounds good. Okay. Let's put s'more in yeah, one. Put some more in more. Yeah. yeah, exactly. But the Lightning Network is a really fascinating. Uh, it's off. It's off the main blockchain, and uh, you put money. You put money into the Lightning Network, and then when transactions come, like cups of coffee being bought, small transactions, then. Uh, they have it off the, the main blockchain, they have it immediately, and then they get reconciled on the main blockchain uh, later. So technologies like this that will continue to scale and expand Bitcoin, they will happen regularly, and you don't have to worry, don't look at the critics and, and believe the propaganda. If someone's yelling about Bitcoin is this or Bitcoin is that with a propaganda, prosaic argument, don't listen to them. Uh, it's just uh, some sort of idea that they're proposing so that you look at their coin. And so a lot of these clone coins are built for a special reason, and the special reason is the special interest of the person developing the coin. You know, it's kind of funny, when we started this, we just asked if Bitcoin was in the low 13,000s, mm -hmm. now it's 14,000. So you go. You gotta, you gotta be so, able to stand mm -hmm. these ups and downs oh, if, yeah. you're gonna, mm -hmm. if you're gonna play in this game. Exactly. You know, these <laughs> cryptocurrencies, you got to be ready for some stuff to go up and down. So let's get back to Verge, or Verge. That we were talking about earlier. What did you like about so Verge? So I like about Verge is so I go to whattomine.com. Whattomine.com is a great site. And everyone says, YMMV, your mileage may vary, which means, you know, don't take the numbers as exact gospel. But they give a great prediction of if you're mining with this type of coin, of this type of GPU card, or that type of GPU card, or even an assortment, you can fill it in like a spreadsheet, and then you can click calculate, and it'll tell you how much money you'll make, how much crypto you'll make, how much that uh, means in dollars, and you can even put the amount that you pay for electricity on the spreadsheet, and it'll calculate your cost, how much electricity it would cost you to mine that coin. For instance, if you're mining, uh, say, Zcash, you'll use the Equihash algorithm. And speaking of Zcash, if you hold that thought for a second, mm -hmm. we started mining Zcash about three months ago, right? Yeah, right. So we're making money mining Zcash, mm -hmm. but Zcash has gone up in the last three months, 67% or $192. So what does that mean? That means that when we were first mining Zcash, it was like $240 or something yeah. like that. So it's like, okay, we think each month we're making a certain dollar value. But when you convert it to dollar value, it's, some, it's one thing in your head. But if let's just say, we, let's just say for round numbers, we mined 10 Zcash, 10 Zec. Uh, over the last few months. So we would think, okay, well, 240, so we've made $2,400 of Zcash. But today, it's 465. Right. So it's doubled almost. It's doubled almost. So, so really, we made $4,000 in Zcash the whole month, even the very first month. We were mining $4,000 worth of Zcash, $400 worth of Zcash each one, but we didn't know it. So wherever the coin ends up, if you've held it, then that's what you're mining has turned out to be. So if you So you're paying back on your equipment a lot quicker than your you payback think. is incredibly quickly. It's incredible. And so when you calculate that out and going, I'm gonna break um, even in ten months. Ten months ten months could be six months, could be four months. never ten months, exactly. That's just where this is going. Of course we don't know. You go the other way and you may never make your money back on your equipment. Yeah. But it is the risk that we talk it's about. It's the risk. So that's why 
uh, this is so exciting. I mean, if you want security, if you want safety, you know, go get a CD. Remember CDs? What are CDs? What are yeah. Certificates of deposit. You, you make like 0.2% or something. I don't know. It's crazy. I think the banks are going to start charging and keep their money there. They will. They do. They go, hey, you know what? We're keeping it safe. You yeah, need to pay exactly. us $10 a month. Well, that's what happens. Savings accounts, checking accounts. <laughs> I mean, it's crazy. Yeah. So uh, people basically uh, recognize that if you've been in this field long enough and you understand the implications, that banking is over. I mean, banking now is an app. You, you have money, somebody else wants your money, so you send it to them directly over the blockchain. You know, people who don't even use blockchain in their cryptocurrency are using their phones for their bank. Right. Well, my wife, she, she has no idea how to buy the first Satoshi. Mm -hmm. But she takes her check, scans it with her phone, and sends it mm -hmm. to her bank. She rarely goes to the bank. All she goes in the bank for is the deposit the, the money our store gets. Uh -huh. You know, because we don't yeah. take checks or anything anymore. Mm -hmm. So our physical brick and mortar store, she has to go deposit that cash in the bank. Because there's no way to do that on the phone for exactly. her. You know, if there's a way to do that on the phone for her, she wouldn't go into the bank at all. So what I'm getting at is, if everybody has a bank on their phone, and even the people who aren't using cryptocurrency are banking on their phone, as John McAfee asked us, what is the purpose of a bank? in the very near future. What will be their purpose? There is very, very little purpose. Uh, unfortunately, banking has been associated, glo the global banking network has been associated with more money laundering than the, what the petty criminals have done. You know what I saw? <laughs> I thought this was hilarious. I saw that in Mexico, uh, the cartel Oh, oh operated, yeah, this guy's third. And uh, <laughs> when they went to the banks to cash in their money, to deposit their cash, because Everybody goes, well, Bitcoin used by criminals, and in this case, there's a story about cash being used by criminals. They had so much money that they were depositing that the uh, means of storing your cash became these Samsonite suitcases, mm -hmm. or a certain brand, may not be Samsonite, mm -hmm. but a certain yeah, brand Samson. of suitcases. Yeah, okay. yeah. And so the banks, you know, when you go to the bank and you get the glass window and a little place they talk at, and then a little place that you hand the money mm -hmm. under and the coin in there, they cut that big enough to hold a Samsonite suitcase. And so they could just push the Samsonite suitcases through the teller window, mm -hmm. and then they would come in and they would weigh the suitcases. And, I, and I'm guessing the suitcase weighed six pounds. So they knew that from the total weight, if the suitcase weighed 100 pounds full of money, they subtract six pounds because it was always the same suitcase. They go, mm -hmm. The suitcase is six pounds. You got 94 pounds of dollar bills and of hundreds in there. You have so much money. And that's how they were banking, is pushing suitcases through the window. So don't tell me that they don't use... When someone says, you know, in Bitcoin used by criminals, that's the story I'm bringing up by now. Exactly. Like cash used by criminals yeah. and banks working, mm -hmm. working with them. Exactly. I mean, if you if you want to do something that is illegal or frowned upon, you know, that's the first thing you're going to do. You're going to find a means of transaction that doesn't go through the Visa banking network. And so cryptocurrency is growing very rapidly uh, because people want some privacy. If they want to buy something that... Well, if you want to buy a monkey in China, a, you're going to use Monero. Setting up for that, exactly. How did you yeah, know I was going to say that? Exactly. That's what... That's what well, John McAfee told he us. He told us, if you're going to buy a monkey in China, use Monero. It was Thailand. <laughs> was it Thailand? Thailand. Thailand. <laughs> so, yeah, so you want to buy a monkey, that's what you're going to use. You're going to use crypto. I think that's so funny. Well, yeah, because I guess monkeys, buying monkeys must be illegal. I guess a lot of people must want monkeys over there. I don't know what the deal is. I would say they'd be nasty to have a monkey around. I don't think so. Yeah. You have to feed them worms. Oh, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So, <clears throat> back to Verge. <clears throat> so, I don't think we finished the story. No, so, I was looking sorry. for mining. So, Verge is, uh, you can mine it with the GPU. The algorithm for Verge is called Lyra 2, Revision 2. And that works on your gaming GPU. And uh, so, whatsmine.com shows that you can make twice as much. If we were making $60 a day mining, we could make $120 a day. By switching the Verge. By switching the Verge. And so... Well, I th you know, I think we should do. Switch your algorithm. I think we should be switching the Verge. Yeah, well, we're testing it out. Okay. I like to test things. We put a few miners He's on like it. He's like a scientist. I'm just like, like, I'm just like an old door-to-door -door salesman. I just, <laughs> I'm just a doing the business. He's the one that's mining, making sure we're on track. So, you know, if you want to hear the real scoop, the scientific kind of scoop, you listen to him. If you want to hear just someone yakking, you listen to me. Well, or how about somebody with the strategy of how to make the money? I mean, Gary's been in this field for since September, 
and uh, you saw what was happening. You saw Bitcoin was like a 3600, and you said, this is it. I see the future. You saw the vision, and you, you dove in. Both. Uh, well, that's just the way I do. If I go in, it. I go full, go all full the way. force. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, so it's been incredibly uh, a great ride. We've had a great ride. Great ride. Say, this, is the, this is the last day of the year. And so we should celebrate. We had a great last quarter. We started this quarter and we're doing great. Well, you know, selling machines, developing a, a network, uh, communicating with people. The, the Crypto Cousins Network is amazing. Uh, we have a Facebook group. Uh, I don't get in as much as I would like. Gary's in a lot talking with people. They're really wonderful. We, we, people help each other. People have questions. I don't know about this coin. I don't know about that coin. How about mining? And people are helping each other. So check out our group. Yeah, face, our, our page. We have a page and group on Facebook. Mm -hmm. The group is more active. Yeah. We do have a new moderator on the page uh, taking mm -hmm. care of that for us. So a new cousin. Because everybody is a cousin in our world. And you spoke of the last quarter was a great quarter. Just so you know, guys, the last quarter in Bitcoin, BTC, was up $9,072. <laughs> up 180.5 percent now. I know everybody's like really screaming right now. Oh, Bitcoin's down no, to 14,000. I mean, come but, on, people. come on, guys. It's up nine thousand dollars in three months. I don't think it's time to abandon this yet. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you put money, in, <laughs> I mean, oh my put, gosh, 180 percent. I mean, if you put it in a regular fund. I mean, what is your fun guy getting you? If he's really, really good, he's getting you 10%. So, you Speaking know, of fun guy, my wife told uh, our guy, we have a guy that hand up, mm -hmm. we got or we got our investment set, I guess, and she said, Gary's uh, been buying Bitcoin and has been doing kind of well at this stuff. And what are your thoughts? Because she's thinking maybe we would move some money over to a Bitcoin fund. You know, because there are funds now. You can, uh, like, blockchain capital, I saw the other Interesting. day. Interesting. That guy knew his stuff, that blockchain capital guy. Not that I'm recommending him, but I told my wife, I said, if you're going to go over there, this guy does know his stuff. Because mm -hmm. I was listening to him. Most of them don't even know what they're talking about. He did. And our, get back to the story, our financial analysis said, great for Gary. I'm glad he's making so much. Tell him he needs to pull that right away before he loses it all. <laughs> <laughs> and put it with me. <laughs> exactly. So, you know, if, if you're a barber, you see people's hairstyle. If you're a financial analyst, you see that people need to be in these different funds. If you're a crypto guy, you see what coins you want to invest in. It's your, your belief, your viewpoint, and your viewpoint changes how you see reality. And so when you talk to people who are in the mainstream and they tell you that this is dangerous or they tell you that you know, you're crazy, it's just their viewpoint. Just appreciate where they're coming from. Everyone's you know, is entitled to a viewpoint. And Everybody has their own reality. Their own reality, exactly. Yeah. Even people who probably go around doing crazy stuff you never heard of have a reality as mm -hmm. to why they justify why they do it. Absolutely. So I mean, people just don't do things and go, I'm not, so there's no reason to do this. They mm -hmm. have a reality and they exactly. justify Even it. crazy things, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, so recognize that what you see on mainstream media, you want to talk about mainstream media, Mainstream media, lamestream media. media, I mean, it's just really, it's, it's really sad because if you have a hobby, I don't care if it's knitting, chess, whatever, cars, and then you watch mainstream media story on it, you look at them and go, these people don't know what they're talking about because they don't. They're, they, they're getting some sound bites and they're asking some questions and whoever's on the show is going to give them a viewpoint, but they have no way to critically analyze what the person's saying. So... When you go to mainstream media for information on cryptocurrency, be very wary. Uh, they have basically no idea what they're talking about. So go online, follow people who are, uh, follow the people we're following on Twitter. I do my best to keep a really clean Twitter uh, follow uh, list of, of people who are... I'm not a Twitter they, user, to be honest. I have a Twitter account, yeah. Gary Leland, yeah. but yeah. I, I, I'm a Facebook guy. So, so yeah. just follow me. And uh, the people I'm following, the people I'm retweeting, uh, someone called Beauty On, a uh, fellow uh, who's in Europe. Wait, do, what is yours? Did guy. you say? Mine's Tony Sakala. Okay. And ours is Crypto Cousins, Crypto with an underscore. Yeah, someone had Crypto Cousins on Twitter. I can't believe that. Can't believe that. I'm going to, everybody private message them. <laughs> <laughs> we should message them, though, and say, hey, you would you surrender that name because you're not using it? I think they were going to do something with it, and then they oh, decided they not, not to. Using it? Well, well, they're not using it. Maybe a little crypto might move it. I, mean, I don't even think they're into crypto. I think they were like mm -hmm. some spy guys or something. Maybe give them a crypto button. <laughs>
<laughs> yeah, I don't think they were into cryptocurrency. Okay. I think they were into cryptology. cryptology. And they were going to do something with it. So, yeah, they have our name, but... Okay, you know. we'll talk to them. There's always a way. So, my point is, mainstream media, I'm not going to call them names. I mean, they're doing the best they can from their viewpoint. Someone hands you a piece of paper and says, read this. And so you read it and you ask the questions and you don't know. Uh, you know, a good example, what was it, a couple weeks ago, Roger Ver was on... Right. MSNBC. A couple times. That's, I mean, he was on. He was on. You tell the story. You, you well, he was it. on like a month ago, on. and then he was on like. He was on right a week before the big pump and dump. Yeah. And what were they asking? Both times. Both, both times he's what like. Did he say? Both times he goes. Bitcoin is dead. These aren't his exact words, but Bitcoin is dead. Bitcoin Cash is now Bitcoin. You need to get out of Bitcoin before you lose all your money and get on the Bitcoin Cash bandwagon. And neither time, neither time did anybody say, or. <laughs> Mr. Burr, aren't you like really involved in Bitcoin Cash? Don't you have a lot to profit to make off of this? Nobody even said that to him. I was I was just shocked. And my wife's watching it. And she's thinking, and she's oh, like, oh, Gary, do we Gary, need to get we need this to guy listen. knows what yeah, he's talking yeah, about? Exactly. We need We're to get into Bitcoin world. Cash and mm -hmm. get out of Bitcoin. I'm going, mm -hmm. no, we don't. And Bitcoin Cash has done well. A lot of people have made money off of Bitcoin Cash. Mm -hmm. So I'm not knocking that. But just uh, I thought that was kind of I thought that was a true pump and dump. Mm -hmm. On TV, sure. or a pump at least, ways. About the pump, and not neither. No Nobody on that. both panels, both times, said, mm -hmm. "Aren't you like one of the starters <laughs> of Bitcoin Cash?" I mean, you mm -hmm. and Jivon Wu or whatever. Exactly, you, know, you two. I mean, and you kind of had to almost see it coming that the biggest miner in the world and Roger Veer, Bitcoin Jesus, together pushing something is going to probably it's gonna succeed. Be successful. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, it's, and I didn't get any free Bitcoin cash because no airdrop. It's called an airdrop. Yeah. <clears throat> you have a wallet, and they someone does a fork of Bitcoin. You know, a fork is where they take the previous blockchain and then they start a new one. And so, with all the old addresses are still around, and so now you, instead of just having one Bitcoin, if you have one Bitcoin and you had it in a wallet, and then you'd have one Bitcoin cash. So, so I got a Bitcoin gold. You got a Bitcoin gold. Yeah, I got I got some. Yeah, I got mm -hmm. some Bitcoin gold. And uh, so it's called an airdrop. So suddenly you have this new coin. What do you do with it? So should I get some Segwit? Because that's like not the original Segwit that was supposed to come out that just came out. So Segwit is a technology. No, no, it's a coin or something. It's I think it came called out called Segwit. That's not the same as the Segwit that we talked oh, about okay. with the trace. It's not the same thing. Not they just they just kind of used the name. Yeah, well. To confuse us. Obviously. Yeah, and I think they split off from the blockchain on December 28th. Bitcoin Gold, Bitcoin Diamond. Bitcoin 10X. There's all kinds of crazy <laughs> stuff. Now, I did see recently, I think it was in, the, in our group, that said, be careful with Bitcoin Diamond. They're going to ask you for yeah, your... Yeah, yeah, I haven't even messed with that. They're going to ask you for your seed words. Don't ever get... There's a reason they're called seed words, because from those seed words, you can recreate your entire wallet. You could leave the country. You could go to another country. You could... Take those 20, 24 C words that you were told to memorize or write down. You were told to write them down on a special card. You can take them to another country, open up your wallet, and then have access to your funds. Because your funds, on the block, they live on the blockchain. They don't live with you. You're not transferring funds anywhere. They live on the blockchain. And when a transaction happens, it's just a reaccounting of who is the owner of the private key of who has the password, so to speak, of those funds on crypto. So don't give out your seed to anybody. It's just be safe with it. Uh, so anyway, we heard this Bitcoin diamond, they were asking for seeds. I mean, that's basically wanting to steal whatever's in your wallet uh, and just take it. So people are saying basically, if you're going to be messing with the new coins, open up a new wallet and try to get them in something that's clean. So if something goes sideways, uh, your main Bitcoin is uh, in cold storage, not going to be affected. Yes, that's the safe. I mean, the safest. Yeah, open up a wallet just for transferring stuff into the mm -hmm. first time. Exactly. And then if everything goes okay, transfer from there to your regular yeah, wallet. Go into your cold storage. Yeah. Another thing also that's happening to us is we're starting to get. It's kind of funny. To, and we just had another one. This is the <laughs> third day in a row we've had someone contacting us to get on our show. Nice, um, nice. Yeah, um, ICOs are wanting to come on the show because mm -hmm. they see how many people are listening, and they know that if a lot of people are listening, there's some people who will be interested in what they have to say. Mm -hmm. You know, as to whether you invest is a whole different story. So, 
We are going to, on our Thursday shows, probably start taking some interviews, and those will be, and we'll announce when we do that they're, they're paying to be on the show. So I want to be up front with everybody on mm -hmm. that. So we'll probably start bringing people on the show in the near future on the Thursday show to explain their ICO. We've been contacted by BitShares. You know, that mm -hmm. guy wants to come That's on the show. That's a big one. I can't remember the one the other, uh, yesterday that you were researching. Mm -hmm. That was exciting. And well, then, that'll be a surprise. It's really exciting. And I just had a message on Facebook. Someone else yeah. asking if they mm -hmm. uh, come on the show, what's the policy? So, you know what else is interesting? So Tony is a checker out because he's the mad scientist. He's checking them out. I mean, basically, we're, we're, we're going to be sure it's not... Outright scam. Yeah, yeah, we're looking at it the best we can. We have no idea what the future yeah. will be, and but it's feel certainly it's, safe. it's newsworthy and interesting to see what these coins are. And again, if you're in this field, if you're in crypto, uh, what do people say? Don't put money in that you don't care about losing. So you know, if you're going to be messing, don't around, put in more than you can don't lose. Don't put in more than you can lose. So you know, pay your bills first. You know, and then you know, invest in crypto. Uh, so we have some exciting things coming. Tony, we've been at this almost an hour here. We probably could go another hour. <laughs> yeah. Just give me a few minutes of, yeah. of, of crypto chat. What do we call it? Crypto? Uh, crypto Corner. Corner. I crypto Corner. I don't know what we're calling it. We'll see. Once we this, once this one comes out, the name will be official. Then we'll uh -huh. probably stick with that. Okay. But uh, chatting with Tony and Gary. <laughs> an hour, really? I think so. I think it's an hour. I mean, we have so yeah, much to talk about. Yeah, it is an hour. We have so much to talk about. Yeah. Anyway, we, we, another interesting thing. We, we have, we've had at least two people who drive trucks. <laughs> who want to mine on their trucks. Yeah, back in the rigs mm -hmm. there. I guess the, the trucks can produce they, electricity. They have a lot of electricity. It's a huge thing, diesel engines, and they're generating power to you know, the refrigerator and they're all the things that they have with them. And they want to, they want a miner that's going to go on the road with them. So uh, we're looking into that to create a miner. Well, that's pretty efficient. Survive. That's actually not wasting electricity. That's taking advantage of taking electricity. Advantage. That would go to waste. It would go to waste. It's just the engine's idling and it's just creating heat. And so, uh, yeah. That's so that, that's kind of, and in case you are catching this on YouTube or somewhere else and you you haven't seen our podcast or heard our podcast yet, make sure and uh, check out our podcast. Go to uh, CryptoCousins.com slash iTunes. If you're on the Apple device, CryptoCousins.com slash Spotify. If you use Spotify, CryptoCousins.com slash Android. If you like the Google Play Store, CryptoCousins.com slash iHeartRadio. You kind of get the drift get there. The drift. If you got it, something you like to find us on, CryptoCousins.com slash whatever it is, and we should be there. That's kind of our short link is the name of our site, of course. Yeah. So that's an easy way. And they need to subscribe because mm -hmm. I think you'll enjoy it. Now that we're going from one show a week to three and... <laughs> Maybe, and then if you take some weeks, we'll have this show on there. It'll be four. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's gonna be a lot of crypto, lot of crypto content. And there's always something to talk about. Yeah, we, we can't contain ourselves. Actually, yeah. we're gonna talk for another five hours after the camera. Yeah, so we, that's why as soon as we came in, <laughs> we started talking about this with Tony. I say, let's turn off uh, everything and uh, get to work. Let's get to work. We have uh, miners to build and uh, cards to buy. It's probably the last few hours of buying GPUs. The great GPU blackout's gonna start. And it's going to be an interesting couple of months. An interesting couple of months. And I may have some verges to go buy. Even though we're mining verges. <laughs> That's right. I may want to just go buy some. Mm -hmm. Well, actually, it's interesting. The, the place we're mining it uh, converts everything to Bitcoin. Oh, wow. So we're making Bitcoin. Oh, we're making Bitcoin. Yeah. By I mean, I, yeah, it was just like, I looked. It was like, oh, my goodness. We already have a balance. And it was just like an hour. And I was like, this is a Bitcoin good. balance. It's a Bitcoin balance. Well, there you go. So we're making Bitcoin. So we are mining Bitcoin. We're mining Bitcoin. We're not even converting it. It's being done automatically. It's being done on the back end. Uh, it's called Zpool. Zpool, I think, Zpool.ca. And Zpool is... Uh, well, that's good to know in case they you want to check it out. Coins, multiple coins. They even have a multi-coin multi algorithm. So you can put in a bunch of programs, tell them, y'all want to mine these coins, and you pick the one that's got the best profitability. Huh? So that's an advanced show. I mean, we have shows. We can do mining shows in the future, yeah. tell people how to do that. I mean, setting that up is not easy uh, because you have there's no there's no big help file. It's like you have to dig, dig, dig in all these mining pools. Speaking of mining pools. Oh, yeah. We're with one of our cousins. <laughs> I'm not going to say his name mm -hmm. because I don't know if he wants that out there. But one of our cousins is very, very smart, and and mm -hmm. yeah, I won't say his name. And nah. he, knows, he knows that I think he's smart. He's been my, he's a call to guy of mine that I like a lot. And we visited over the Christmas holidays, and he's building the Crypto Cousins mining pool right now. So in the short mm -hmm. future, I say short, uh, maybe even longer than I think, but I do know a lot of work's been done. Oh, fantastic! Yeah, I mean, in a very short time. In a very short period mm -hmm. of time. 
And so we should have a Crypto Cousins mining pool coming up where all the cousins, we can all get on the same pool and work together uh, to make our mining more efficient. This is exciting. Yeah. I have, and, I, and I haven't seen any of the results yet. Yeah, so, so uh, it's, it's, a, it's a Skunk Works project. Stuff is happening, and uh, this is going to be really, really cool. So we're trying to get into everything in this vertical. We're, tr we're, we're investing. I'm trading. We're creating videos. We're creating podcasts. We're mining. We're doing a mining pool. I mean, we're trying to cover this whole thing. So we're able to talk uh, intelligently about a lot of different things mm -hmm. with Bitcoin. I mean, there's a there's or crypto. There's only there's a big difference between experience and book knowledge. You know, so we're getting these world lessons uh, that give us the experience that we can share with you. Uh, you can read it in a book, How to Build a Miner. You can read it all day long. You read. Well, we'll have a video soon. But we're going to have a video, and you'll see it. And uh, we'll do a video on the software you were talking about for mining the Verge. I mean, mm -hmm. we're doing video. We did a one on a full node, running a full node. It was yes. a screenshot video for the most part, but yeah, we, it's what you yeah, wanted to see. Exactly. And we felt a little uh, like we didn't talk a lot about why you should have a full node, and we'll go into that further in detail. Uh, Jimmy Song just posted a video on YouTube. There's a lot of great people, other people to watch. I know we don't talk a lot about others, but we have a lot of people that we follow that we really have a trust in. And Jimmy talked about a full node and talked, uh, he said why well, you should have one. And we'll, uh, we'll explain it as well, why you should have a full node. Uh, because it, uh, it, it takes away the trust factor. You don't have to trust somebody else to uh, check what's going on in your wallet. And uh, it gives you uh, more power and more privacy uh, with your Bitcoin. Well, sorry about right. my phone here. No, I, no, I know a we lot got a lot going. Well, it's I, great because you're, you're doing a great job yeah. in, the, in the group. Um, well, we have a very active group. So very active. I'm going to say goodbye. All right, thank you, Thanks folks. for uh, joining us today, and we hope you have a happy new year happy and that year. crypto comes your way soon. <laughs> Much of it. Mucho crypto. Adios, muchachos. Take care. Bye. Thank you.